We hope you enjoy this rebroadcast of Risk On's highest rated topics for the previous week. Todd and Jason will return next week with their regularly scheduled programming. And now, Risk On. Well, 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 well. It's Todd Alt. This is my partner in uh, whatever we do here, Jason Bartholomew, <laughs> poker player extraordinaire. Over there in the corner is Skyla. We're Why does back. it look like I'm ghosting? You look like some sort of ghost on the Oh, screen. I got a ghost. That's weird. Oh, yeah, you do. What's up with that? <laughs> it's a hologram for N- the NFT plays. Yeah. Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, over in the corner booth is uh, Brett, our our main uh, director uh, extraordinary, who's been with us every episode. Hundred. This is the 114th episode of Risk On. Yes. Last time we broadcasted was July 16th. 16th. Yeah. And... Uh, Wow. If I could tell you the chain of events that took place after that, it was... um... We... You turn those on, Brett? Yep. We had a series of explosions. Mm. You know, yesterday I was trying to check out why people don't like this group. You know this band? Nickelback? Everyone hates them. I like their music, but I, I read a whole thing about why people don't like them, right? They like they don't like them because they're too commercial. And their their stuff is like b- bubblegummy, I guess. Yeah. Kind of after grunge. But I, I like their music, right? I don't mind them. You like Nickelback? I don't mind them. They're okay. You just don't mind okay. them. okay. They're just meh. God I'm not no turn limit. It off. And, and, I think the funniest part of that paragraph was it's said to be seen as a blemish in one's personality if they like Nickelback. Yeah. <laughs> blemish. Hey, um, I want to talk to you guys. If you're watching the show today, which I don't even know if anyone ever wants to see us again after we abandon you for 24 days. 24 day ghost. <laughs> but I will tell you it was with good reason. So we took a private jet back to the ringing of the bell for Alzamend, ALZN, which went public on uh, June 15th, which the, the event for the, the ringing of the bell was wonderful. And we tested everybody. Like, you, you either had to be vaccinated, and if you weren't vaccinated, you had to be tested and wear a max, mask, and uh, got on the jet. And everybody on the jet that didn't have, uh, wasn't vaccinated, got COVID. Two people, or, or three people who were, no, two people who were vaccinated got it anyways. They had mild cases. I can't tell you who those people were for disclosure purposes. But I can tell you Skyla got COVID. <laughs> oh, shit. And yeah. I can tell I you, uh, really terrible. I, I can tell you, uh, Brett got COVID. And Nick is not here today. His son, who works mm-hmm. with us, he got COVID. Uh, one of my dearest and one of my closest friends, one of my most important friends in my life, long time friendship, someone who I care deeply about, ended up going into the hospital and was there for about 20 days or so, give long or take. Time. Maybe it was less, you know. Maybe it was 19 days or 18 days. Got blood clots, had to be on. Uh, oxygen, 100%, 40 milliliters a minute. <sharp inhale> Laid there in bed, calling me, telling me, don't worry, I'm not going to die. So I went into a tailspin. Now, I was fine, but personally, I was in a little... Oh, my daughter got it, too. My youngest daughter got COVID, and she actually had one vaccination. Yep. And I thought for sure I had it, but I tested negative. I couldn't even stay awake for a week. That was... Like, I was, like, falling asleep, even just walking. Um so did my other my other kids. Uh, Chase didn't get it, but uh, my son Enzo he didn't feel well. My my wife didn't feel well. It was a mess. My do- it was a, turned into a total calamity at the office. We had to quarantine everybody. I do want to talk about uh, DPW. Uh, what now? That's the symbol for Alt Global Holdings traded on the NYSE American. Oh my God, dude! Do I get tweeted and like? DM'd about this like crazy. DPW. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of familiar with it. Yeah, that. so that's a that's a company traded on the uh, New York American that I took over in 2000, late in 2016. Really didn't take it over until like actually 18, but I was involved because I took bought a big block. That's our holding company now. We continue to build that. We got earnings uh, out next Monday. Correct. So it'll be clear with everyone. Earnings after the close next Monday. We already pre-announced them, folks. 
Uh, that's why I'm able to buy <laughs> because sure. I couldn't buy if I hadn't pre-announced. Um, and I've been buying every day. You know that, right? When all, you all global holdings. So all global holdings, DPW has its largest investor, single shareholder, uh, besides some other mutual funds and stuff like that, uh, buying, and that's Alt and Company, the private company that I control also with uh, my partners. We've been buying a DPW. This is public knowledge. These are public filings. I'm not suggesting you should buy it. Nope. Uh, it's not an endorsement to buy the stock, uh, but I uh, am a believer. Obviously, I wouldn't be buying. I uh, when when you say I'm buying every day, like literally when, every day. When you forget to buy or you don't buy, it's a big deal now. Yeah, well, I can't buy forever. You know, maybe in a year or two or whenever. I don't know when I can stop buying, but yeah. Uh, Wait, how many shares have you sold? I've never sold a single share. You guys hear that? And I got reversed on. I got like crushed. I got. They did two reverses because because of Bitcoin, the stock collapsed and it was terrible. Um, but. Uh, Anyways, yeah. So no, I've never sold a single share. Right. Uh, no, no. Yep. I never sold a single share of Alzheimer either. What I did was accidentally press the sell button instead of the buy. But if you pay close attention, because I have to report every buy and sell, you'll see a buy right after that. A second yeah. later, buying it back. Th th a minute later, when I realized what an idiot I was for, as you call it, fat, fat fingered finger. it. Yep. But is it an implication that my fingers are fat? Yeah. Because I'm overweight. Well, no, you like to make buys. You okay, know, that's okay. All. Sometimes well, I, I, I tell them to if... buy 10K shares. By the way, I am down actually some weight a little bit. You can't probably tell on the screen. Can, can you tell yet? Uh, but I'm actually down a little weight because I've been doing this crazy thing, right? Um, I I don't eat really Until between, I eat at 2 o'clock yeah. to 8, and I fast for 16 hours. Now, today I had some nuts around 1 o'clock. Because my schedule got all messed up because Jason made me go to a Mexican place last night. Yep. If you're a shareholder, listen, I don't care if you own any stock. If you have people you know with Alzheimer's or dementia and they have issues, you need to tell them about this. Because when those, t when those studies become available and there's an unmet need, obviously there's an opportunity to ask for compassionate use. There has not been a treatment for Alzheimer's in 100 years. There's been bullshit, as far as I'm concerned. Little nonsense things that they claim does a little bit, but nothing. Nothing really substantial to slow the progression. And we're trying to get shots on goal for that. By the way, BioV has a, a product for Alzheimer's. And look, I invested in that. Uh, we bought, as you know, $5 million at $8. Bucks. Um, I'm c committed yeah. to the idea. Yep. And I want someone to cure it. And, and by the way, there's multiple forms of dementia. So yeah. not one company is going to come out and say they have the cure for everything or the treatment for everything. And I'm not saying Alzheimer's has that. I'm saying don't even pay attention to us for investment purposes. Just make sure that you make people aware of this and contact the company and see if there's something we can do to help them down the road. Hey, Any, Sky, uh, hey Sky, let's break it up a little bit. Let's yeah. start. Let's have that joke right now. Oh, you want the joke? Okay. But you gotta get delivery. So yeah, I'm you gotta gonna think try about the best. delivery. Okay. I, I thought this one was literally clever. Okay, let's go. Okay. What do the movies Titanic and The Sixth Sense have in common? What do the movies Titanic and The Sixth Sense have in common? I see dead people. <laughs> hey! That's Wait, funny. Boom! Headshot! Nice. Thank you. Why don't oh, no you walk worries, us man. through uh, what you do, what your channels are? You know, just walk us through who you are. All right. Uh, well, I am Jordan, and I'm the regular guy. You know, I got a day job, a trade. I went to college for business, um, got my associates. I'm finishing up my bachelor slowly but surely, but we're also family planning, so I'm putting that on the back burner for a little bit. And what's your what's your what's your ago, day job? What's your day job? Uh, right now I'm a electrician. I'm, I'm training to be a certified electrician. Nice. I can tell you one thing for sure. They're in demand, man. It, absolutely. Nobody wants to work. That's a big demanding job. And trust me, yeah. if we had a good elect, if you're, if we had a good electrician in Vegas, I'd be still stoked. It's not there. It's hard to find people that want to work in those trades, those really important trades. And you can do really well for yourself you know, ultimately becoming a contractor and being your own electrician and your own, I mean, this is so hard to find good electricians. Anyways, I apologize for digressing. That's all right. 
So uh, one of my one of my passions and one of my gifts, if that God has given me, if you will, is uh, the ability to uh, seek out opportunity in any form. You know, whether that be, uh, you know, as you mentioned, contractor. I was a contractor for many years while I was doing college. You know, and and I've I've always been able to spot something with value. You know, whether and it doesn't have to be financial value. It could be uh, any sort of value that you want to quantify in any sort of way, you know what I mean? Um, whether it be the value of knowledge, the value of, of, of uh, just friendship, the value of bonding, uh, community, anything at all. So my whole venture into this <clears throat> stock market, if you will, started, I think, like a lot of people have recently, you know? I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say, I've been in the stock market for years. My first purchase was NAKD at $2.50 when it was ripping, okay? Talk about moon boy mailing, that's what they called me, <laughs> all right? And that was where it really started for me, and I've taken a beating, okay? I've uh, since then got out of the position, uh, sw swing traded it a little bit, and it was right around, um, I wanna say late May, or no, early, late March, that I said, you know what? I started to learn some more through the help of my friends and technical analysis. And I said, this stock's way undervalued. Uh, you know, Hey, I'm glad that we're back. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I know it's a long show. Randy, thank you. Skyla, mm -hmm. Joe for hanging out, Brett for coming back and not dying. Special shout out to my friend, Eric. Thank you for getting out of the hospital. All the people that got COVID here. We're so happy that you're healthy. We're going to see you tomorrow. We're so happy to be back. We got to catch up on a lot of things. Please make sure you consult your financial advisor. This is a show for entertainment purposes. We're not telling you to buy anything we own. We're just telling you what we're doing. Please check it out. Be well. See you tomorrow. Get vaccinated. Is this is episode 115, Skylar. Yes. Hey, it's uh, Risk On. It's Todd Alt and Jason Bartholomew. This is Risk On. Uh, this is a show about risk, Jason. Do you think it's a show about risk? Everything in life is has risk. But the reality is, is you should listen to Jim Chanos today about it and form your own view point of view. Jim Chanos, the famous short seller, he owns puts in it, and he was very clear that even at pre-pandemic levels in, in 2009, um, in 2019, if they were doing 600 million a year of EBITDA, they'd still be using losing 100 million a quarter plus 100 million dollars of depreciation. Yeah. So to me, this is a pretty big reversal from 36 down to 3175. However, it's a meme stock, and that doesn't mean anything. I mean, 20% swings are nothing. For it me. means nothing. Yeah. If I were looking at traditional signs, this would make me nervous. But <sighs> traditional signs don't matter right now. They don't. Uh, so what does it mean, right? Um, what does it it's mean? It's really it? <laughs> hard for me to tell you. Todd, honest question. Why does AMC keep bouncing back just as short as fishing? Here's my problem is I don't actually know, and I can't tell that there's actually a large short position here. I it, um. I don't know that there's a gigantic short position in AMC. And so I don't know that this meets the same criteria that you had with GameStop where it was kind of overly shorted, and as it rallied, more people bailed in, and they didn't know the meme wave, the meme, the meme revolution was coming. And so I don't think people are as stupid to be short this stock. Um, short interest picked up since the earnings report, but before that, it was kind of it was very mellow, actually. Right. Yeah. Very. So mellow. my concern is that you don't have the short interest uh, desire that people had before. You know, I don't think that people are heavily wanting to be short this name because they could get their head cut off. For so, sure. Uh, this is my thoughts on um, AMC. Oh, it's good to be the king as a young guy. <laughs> King motherfucker. He, you know what? I thought he was some old dude. He was talking like an old man. This guy's a young dude. <laughs> hey, he's a good job. What the hell? Really watched the thank you video. What'd you say? The hundredth anniversary. Somebody didn't watch the video. No, no, no. I watched it. Oh, wait a second. Hold on a second. Were you? Did you do the yoga? No, I held up the. No oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's like not your... a prop comic. It just happens to be near me. No, but you got to you gotta think about, right, when I when I was talking to you and you talk about Mel Brooks, that's kind of... 
What? I'm a hundred. I know, but that, yeah. that's kind of an older uh, crowd thing, right? That's kind of my generation, right? Or a little older, right? Jordan did a great job yesterday. I personally am not afraid of, uh, I've said far worse things on the internet to get in trouble. So uh, this thing is so synthetically shorted. It is grotesque. I mean, I just, I'm a little pissed because I bought it the 55, 90 or something today, but I'm now at like 240,000 shares. So it's like, it's just, this feels like one of those once in a lifetime. Uh, really, I want to know, am I getting a ghost or a phantom? That's what it comes down to. Nice. Wow. No, I mean, the, and Todd, I know people will get mad at me if I don't ask this question. I don't particularly care, but do you still have the, the how many million, the 43 million shares? So, we're, uh, but I want to be clear, just to be very clear, we, Jason and I, own the stock in the account right now. And in fact, I have no problem even right now because I looked at it's below 55. I have no problem right now going and acqu acquiring more. We've never Trade shorted that. Uh, let me let me, let me me be that clear here. I will buy another, let's see here. Let's see, I'll buy another 100,000. <laughs> Todd, buy, look, somebody, DR, look, DRDP said, Todd, buy another 100K. I'll buy another 100,000. Here is on the screen. It's turned on. You can see it right here. You're gonna get filled after hours on 100k. I don't know. No, because they they they're you know slowing them down. Oh, I'm with you. And Stein yeah. the I put 100,000 to buy at 54.20, and they filled me on 441 at 54.08, and uh, apparently I'm the bid now for. Ninety-nine thousand. Oh my God! Shares. Look at that. Can you see it? I'm like, hold on. Is the risk on conference? Well, this joke doesn't work anymore because the infrastructure passed today. Oh, but that's I said this yesterday. Is risk on conference like infrastructure week? Are we going to just keep saying it and it's going to? No risk. <laughs> we actually got the dates yesterday from the event coordinator, and uh, believe it or not, the head of media for the company is here today and yesterday. I had dinner with them last night. We we're actually meeting tonight to see if those dates work. Yep. And if they do, we're going to lock it in at a nice hotel here in uh, Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. We didn't reveal the hotel. Oh, yeah. We haven't revealed the hotel right. yet. Well, Just because so people troll me, I'm not going to tell them what hotel it is until I've got that contract signed. Because yeah. you know what happened when, with the NASDAQ thing? When I went on the NASDAQ, people trolled me and they they text just did all kinds of terrible things. Yeah. Like, you know, I got some haters out there. As you know, it's good to be the king. I have uh, some haters. And so they tend to try to troll me a little bit. Uh, what's okay, you know? Well, just don't play Nickelback at the conference, please. Oh, come on, man. You, you lost a little street cred yesterday. I got to say. Ooh. Like in Nickelback? Nobody likes it. See this? Video. See this? I, no. I won't even watch my bar mitzvah video because there's a, there's a Nickelback song. Nobody in it. likes them. Wow. Hey, well, we're so appreciative that you've been on the show. I uh, uh, will definitely have you back again. I uh, have to jump uh, in less than four minutes. Is there anything you want to wrap up with or talk about or... You want to hit me with a couple questions that people have been wanting you to ask me? Uh, I think people just want you to want. I think that what everybody has said, and we are all very appreciative of the large stake you have in this thing, just please set your sights a little higher than a buck. Okay. I actually... I actually think if he makes the right acquisition, I could see like $2 to $3 a share under certain scenarios, but I don't know who he's going to buy. I'm pu purely speculating. Um, I think our point is just that that's in a world where things make sense. Right. Well, they get they get a, they have a pretty feverish. The Naked Army, I'm impressed with. Hey, I'm actually more impressed with them than I am anybody else. For sure. Three times the flow. I know. They're, they're committed, man. If it's 700 million times... But this was fun, and and by the way, it's good to be the king. We're gonna want you to come back again, okay? Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for everybody. Her. It is uh, August eighth, two thousand twenty-one. This has been Risk On. Thank you so much, Naked Army. We appreciate the support. Uh, you guys are very dedicated to uh, Naked Brands, and I am a shareholder, for sure. We will talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Episode sixteen, right? How many? One hundred and sixteen. Oh. One hundred, yeah, one sixteen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, I was told I've lost all credibility now.
all credibility. I can't help it. Sorry. I like it. I like it. I, I went to the dark side. They're gonna big. They're gonna buy something big, and what what are they gonna get with it? Okay, this. We, I said we talk about naked later. It's later now. Let's get in it. Let's go. Okay. Let's uh, go. What are they gonna get with it? With naked brands? I don't know. They got three hundred million. No, listen to me. What they're gonna get? Let's okay. Hear it. So they're gonna make an acquisition. I believe that'll be substantial, and the person that they buy will get three hundred million dollars, less whatever the fees there are for all the lawyers and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but they're gonna get the shareholder base that if they do something compelling, we'll see this thing, and let's say only, I don't know where it goes to. Let's say it goes to $2. $2. It's a big rip that's from here. That's a huge rip. Rip huge from here. Almost, yeah, right? four, four So they gotta up. buy something that's meaningful, that has real growth potential, and for the company that's doing a deal with them, they gotta be like, we're on a growth trajectory, you already have the cash, we're guaranteed the cash because unlike a SPAC, and you're going to understand my point of view right now, okay? <laughs> and I need you to understand it. It's really important. I hate my haircut right now. Whatever I did today, it looks t terrible. Got a hair parted down the middle. <laughs> Listen, Dude. I'm going to give you information that you need to understand, and the <laughs> smart people out there will get it, okay? I don't know where <laughs> Nick is going, but this dawned on me last night. I'm listening. Okay? You want to hear it? I'm going to tell you right. Who wants to hear it? You want to hear it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, when you when you do a deal with a SPAC, the the SPAC owners can get their money back. Jason, you know where I'm going with this, right? I kind of you own a SPAC, you can you can say, you know what, I don't like the deal, give me my money back. Yes. You get to keep a warrant, but you so the SPAC sponsor has to convince <laughs> the people that it's a good deal because they can vote it down to say, forget it, I want my money back. Right? I want my money back. Hey, Mr. SPAC owner, I don't like the thing you're buying. Give me my money back. I just made percentage. I put the money in the SPAC. I got 5% while I waited. Better than treasuries. It's, remember, SPAC money is held in a custodial trust. Yep. So they're guaranteed their money back. That's why all these SPACs get money. g wax back. Do you understand this? I do. So what's the difference between Naked Brands? They don't have to give the money back. So if you go, if Naked Brands buys you, yep. you're guaranteed if the deal closes to have the money. They don't have any risk that the money's not going to be there because the SPAC shareholders can say, hey, we're going to take our money back. Right. And the SPAC may not have as much money to close, and they may have to go get new deals. And that's Finance. why you see a lot of SPACs doing pipes, because the SPAC buyers just want the warrants. <laughs> so you're a hedge fund, right? Get this right. I mean, seriously, do the work here. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of people like not doing the fucking work. <laughs> do the work and understand the SPAC buyer, the person who did the IPO on the SPAC, gets to keep the warrant no matter what. So they can just give their money back to the SPAC. The SPAC then has to go replace that dollars with someone else by doing a pipe. Therefore, there's more dilution. These guys yeah, don't have true. to give the money back. They already have it in their pocket. The 300 million is in the account. So uh -huh. when they go acquire somebody, they can tell someone we have confidence because we have the money. You get it upon the merger. We don't have to ask mother may I by the SPAC owner. That's true. Right? Yeah, that's a great point. And there's not a bunch of warrants with dilution. Now granted, <laughs> Naked raised a bunch of money and issued warrants. Yes. But all of those look like they're being converted and stuff. And so by the time this is, it may be a better deal to do a deal with them than a SPAC. Now, okay. the negative is they have to get NASDAQ approval. NASDAQ will look at the company they're acquiring and say, hey, you got to be a, like in a position to be listed on our exchange. That's not that hard. Right. The company they're acquiring has to be audited. That's not that hard. That's not hard. So they still have to go through some of the hoops. But I believe Naked's going to buy someone. They're going to buy someone big. And I'm not hyping it. I own the fucking stock. I own the hot stock. I'm not paid <laughs> by the company. No one's paid me to do it. Naked Army hasn't paid me to do it. I like the deal. I think it trades up. And for a lot of you who didn't like $2 or $1.50, hey, for me, that's a big return. That's huge. Right? So right now, I bought the stock. I'm buying the stock. That's my fucking answer. If you don't like it, fuck off. <laughs> I love it. This is great. <clears throat> Finish what you were saying about naked. Okay, let's go back to naked. Oh, this is a naked show. Naked, naked, naked. Uh, so, na Paul, earlier today I was saying when I was ranting that oh. Naked Brands is like a SPAC but better because it doesn't need to get approval to release the $300 million. When a buyer buys a SPAC, by the way, you know that DPW guys filed 
confidentially to raise $100 million for its own SPAC called Alt Disruptive Technologies. We already reported that. So when they buy that SPAC, they're going to um, they're going to get a ten dollar share that has to be the cash has to be kept in escrow. So they get they get to collect, and depending on what I pay them, three percent to sit there, they're earning more than their cash earned in the <clears> treasury, <throat> and they get a warrant they get to keep for free. Okay, so since they get to keep that warrant for free, when you go to buy something, they can say, "Hey, just give me back my cash. I don't want to take equity risk." And therefore, as a SPAC owner, you have to replace them. And that's why you see a lot of pipes, private investment and public equity. You see pipes associated with the deal and a registration statement because a lot of the SPAC owners want their money back because they want to keep the warrant as a free rider or, as you say, a free roll. Yeah, it is. Right? Yep. In the case of, of Naked Brands, he's got $300 million in NASDAQ listing, a huge shareholder base. And there's the free roll is that he has the money now. He doesn't have to get approval. He has to get approval to do the merger, but the shareholders are going to vote for that. He has to get approval from the NASDAQ to list the company like it's a new listing, but they're going to approve that. He's not going to go buy something that doesn't have the money. And since he has $300 million, they're going to have the money to go public. Who knows if Justin... Does that make sense? Does anybody know if Justin's having a get-together Friday the 20th? How would I know? I'm just seeing. By the way, none of my research is based on anything Justin told me. He hasn't spoken to me. I spoke to him like one time, by a couple of times by text about coming on the show. So I don't know, smooth from Shinola, what he may be. I don't know. A week from Friday after market closing, he's having some kind of get together. Oh, he's answering questions. Did you confirm? Yeah, my understanding is they uh, they have a year extension, so they uh, do not have to be in compliant by the 25th. But don't take my word for it. Call around. Like. Just tell the joke and then wait a little bit and then emphasize. Okay. When you die, which part of your body dies last? The pupils. They die late. Oh, they die late. Oh, I like that. There we go. You know, what's funny I is, like is that, that one. those are dad jokes. And those, those of you who heard me cussing earlier, that was not good of me. Sorry. Uh... The reality is, is that uh, we like to tell dad jokes uh, so that we can uh, tell dad jokes. My man, Jason, thank you for putting up with my rant today. Dude, you carried me today. Hey, it's a naked day. No one wants to see me naked, but I was buying some naked brands. If you're going to buy naked brands, do your own research. Don't rely on me. We're going to see you tomorrow. And to the naked army and all those people providing us all that due diligence, we love you and we're with you. And we'll see what happens. Hey, Justin, go buy a company, make us rich. We'll see you. Hey, it's Todd Alt. This is uh, episode 117, which is what I hope to live, but won't live that long if I don't lose some weight. I've been fasting, this intermittent fasting. Yesterday, though, or today I broke the fast because today I got up and did 13 TV and radio interviews, and I had to get up at 5 in the morning, and I'm not happy about that, but the interviews were great. They were fun. They were about all the men neuro. Can, you can hire Nickelback to play very, very cheap. One second. What a smart Perfect. ass, Brian Casey. I like that. Nickelback. Look at this photograph. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what, man? It's true. What's up? The hatchet man. Am I, com- am I coming in clear? Yeah. Uh, oh, look at hatchets on. What's clear is. It's a good picture. <laughs> it's official. It's official. LA story in the house. Nice. Nice. Where are you right now? I'm on my uh, I'm on my guest house patio. Nice view. Very nice. I see a little. That's my pad. That's where I live. Sweet place, man. Wow. Is nice. That, where? What, what? You don't have to give us the exact area, but what's the general area? I'm Beverly Hills. Oh. Oh, you live in Beverly Hills. Yeah, I'm like, uh, it's called Beverly Crest area, it's a, that without, give, without giving too much away. Oh, nice. Uh, you know what's down there? One of the, you know, I go to bed, I used to go to Bedford every, uh, every uh, Saturday, pre-COVID. As I said, I went to Nate and Al's and stuff like that. Uh, right. Down there is a place called Crustaceans. You ever eaten there? Oh, of course. All the time. They have the best then, garlic noodles in the whole world. Like, by far, the very best garlic by noodles. By far. Live music. Oh, yeah. Um, my, my wife's friend uh, used to play there. And so we'd get this little, like, front row table. And 
that had, you know, had like koi fish in the floor that you kind of walk over and like, you know, kind of, kind of an amazing place. The food's amazing. Super, super good. And hey, no my ne- wife, uh, we'd go there when we were just dating before we got married. Hey, no need to give us specifics if you don't want to. Uh, and I know you run LA story. Is that your total full-time day job or do you do something different during the day? No, I, I, I trade stocks. Uh, you know, I have, I have a few, uh, a few holdings. Um, I had a walnut company that just kind of got shut down because of COVID. Uh, it was called Eric and M's Sweet Delights. And we did like uh, keto walnuts and candied walnuts that you kind of put on salads, like salad toppers. Uh, so I had that business for a little bit. And unfortunately, COVID kind of, kind of forced me to start like day trading. And, and then, you know, I just figured, you know, I'm just going to go back to my, my long holds and, you know, kind of like, you know, full disclosure, I, I'm, I'm more of a long holder and, you know, I might swing a couple of my holdings, but uh, it's pretty rare now. Now I'm just sitting in, you know, naked army. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a colonel. I think I feel like I'm a colonel. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe, 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 you know, just uh, maybe just a little sergeant or something, but I don't know how those rankings work, you know, reading reports, doing my due diligence and, and, and mostly for naked, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, I'm just a huge believer in this, in this company. And I, I have, I have been since February, I believe was, was when uh, my wife and I bought into it and, you know, she's, she's, we're on stock twits and, you know, she's rich chick one and, and, you know, she's, uh, she, you know, she's, she's great at putting out information and, uh, you know, keeping people on board and uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's fun as well as, you know, it's going to start paying off soon. If you have a direct business online, what you just talked about, we're going to put that link up. Do you have a producer now or no? No, we, we are, we're self-produced. So if we had Brett studio, would you need a producer? And I'm not going to put them on camera. hundred percent. Yeah. We out, would need, out of we res- would want a producer. Out of respect. You want that. Yeah. You want that outside opinion. You want that professional outside opinion. Cause they're the ones that create the music in, don't, in, in kind of part, you know, hey, we, hey, we make don't, the song. Don't, Brett, uh, Nick, don't put him on camera as a respect for his wishes. Uh, uh, let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm asking yeah, someone in the studio. Producer, engineer, and, and, that's, and we bring our own crew, you know? Like roadies, like, like gear, gear, gear guys. So, if, if, we, so put, if gear. we put him in Brett's studio and he has 30 songs and he recorded them, Brett said, Brett, you said 10 songs was about, uh, about well, 20,000? He's about 20,000. That's on the, the low side. Okay. Yeah. And then he says he needs a producer. Is that the kind of thing? I, I, I just don't know this, so I'm not putting you on the spot. Yep. Yes or no. But I know you have been a music guy before pretty intensely. Is, is that the kind of thing you do? Because I know you produce a lot of stuff we do. You produce shows for other commercial shows uh, like uh, Hollywood stuff. Well, the, the main thing, I mean, the, I've been involved in a lot of records, but the, the main thing, I, I've not heard Eric's record yet. My or wife what? liked it. That's why I'm interested because she yeah. doesn't like anything. <laughs> yeah, so the, so she only the, likes uh, Led Zeppelin. The, the key would be to listen to the music and then find a, a producer that best fits their sound. Right. Uh, I was listening to him saying that, that uh, you know, 100%. that the, when they were recording before, the, the music was kind of taken apart. And there's nothing worse for an artist than to have a producer come in and share their vision. I actually had that happen with Todd Rudgren. Uh-huh. And it, and and it and everything comes out sounding like Todd Rudgren, which is great if you're Todd Rudgren, but it's right. not great if you're me. Right. So yeah. the key is to find the producer that best fits their sound and their vision that brings out the best in their record. But we can do that. I mean, I know plenty of producers. Right. I just didn't. Uh, I just don't know that I yeah. would be the guy for it. Right. Right. Yeah. And we we do like a uh, we do like a uh, Avenged Sevenfold meets the Foo Fighters. Um, you know, I, I keep the language very clean, but. I st- we're still, you know, we're still pretty. You, you saw the pictures, so we we look like we're some death metal band, but we yeah. play this like really. It's like Event Sevenfold, and the only reason we kind of do the mask is, you know, kind of to to kind of to age this down a little bit, you know, so you really. I tell know you what, how you know what, all this thing is. There's a there's a buddy <laughs> of mine who's a producer that is amazing, and he's he. I mean, he's worked with a lot of people, and he's had a lot of big hits. Um, what do they? What does it cost to have a producer? I'd have to ask him. I mean, it you oh, know, depends man. on who's asking. For me, I yeah, mean, we those, could probably those get it those, reasonable. Those guys can. Yeah, um, they're expensive. But you know, I mean, he, he's he's had a, he's had quite a quite a few. Big what's hits. reasonable to you? Like, what's a reasonable number? You think? Uh, to get him to do all ten songs, you're probably looking at, I'd figure ten grand. 
Like that's really reasonable. Yeah, right. but that, that's the friends deal. <laughs> what about Butch Vig? Any connections with Butch Vig? <laughs> no, no, but uh, but I mean, you know, this guy's written a bunch of hit songs and he's produced a bunch of hit songs. Uh-huh. Um, you know, especially, I, I mean, it. back in, back in the day, we, you know, we, we were with Atlantic records and we were with Epic records. You were with we everybody. Were, you were, you were, you were, so, you were everywhere. Well, we, I mean, I was and just Atlantic was right? artist owned and run. It was <clears throat> brilliant. It was like, it was all artists. Eric, Eric, Eric guys, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, cause I, I appreciate you coming on. I, I really do believe in risk. Everyone needs a break or something that happens for them. Um, so, uh, and, not, and not, by the way, I'm not suggesting that I'm giving you a break because I don't know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know shit from Shinola about how to produce Come music. Come on, be, be our manager, Todd. Let's go. No, that's all not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> all, all records. Let's, yeah, all records. records. <laughs> let's, let's not get carried away. But we do have a media business, uh, and we have a very talented guy who's in charge of the whole thing. He happens to be here this week. He's uh, he's in from Canada, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to put you in touch with him and Brett. Uh, and see if we can't do something for you. Maybe 10, 10 15 songs. That, that 10, would be 10 huge, songs would be enough. 10 15 songs would be overkill. Be yeah. So you pick the top you know, 10 songs. You still have to t- pick the top 10 songs. I will put up the money uh, uh, to help produce it. Okay, be clear here. I don't know what all yep. is involved, but I'll help get Brett's studio. I'll help get our guy involved so that he can do it. And then we'll put it out to our universe about something we produced and see if people like it. My wife likes it. It'll be fun, right? Worst case scenario, we lose 30, 40 grand. I mean, did I mean, you, you know, we lost that uh, in gambling uh, the other the, day. The music, the <laughs> did, music, the music. I'm kidding, makes, by the way. You know, I, 30, 40 grand is a lot of money to me. Hey, there's one clear. stipulation, the, right? What? There's a duet with Nickelback. Look at this oh, photograph! Wow. <laughs> what do you got for me, Skyla? What do you got for me? Okay, so it has a bad word in it, so it's not technically a dad joke, Uh-oh. but it's funny. So, Minnie and Mickey were in court getting a divorce. The judge says to Mickey, you know you can't divorce your wife just because she's crazy. And Mickey goes, I didn't say she was crazy. I said she was fucking goofy. (laughs) Ouch. Perfect. Oh, wow. She likes dogs. (laughs) Hey, you guys, take care. We're going to see you tomorrow. I'll have a quesadilla. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, you're in the middle of deals and stuff gets all complicated right before a show. And uh, we do deals here. We do real estate. We uh, purchase companies. Uh, we purchase um, whole or part of companies. Um, it is the uh, 118th show. 118th show. It's the 13th of December. It's Friday. The th- or excuse me. What the hell? <laughs> it's the 13th of uh, August, August 13th. It's Friday the 13th, and it kind of feels like it is to me right now. I'm pretty frustrated. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't lie to the audience. Uh, I'm in a shit mood. Um, I'm in the middle of two deals that are frustrating the living hell out of me. And uh, it's one of the reasons we were late, because we were on the phone with a bunch of lawyers who can't make sense of shit, who talk in riddles, and up and sat down, and upside down, and backwards and forwards. In, in defense of them, they're doing their job. It's not their fault. I sure. just get frustrated with who's on first, who's on second, who's on third. I don't know why, Can we turn this, this thing isn't on? working. Um, that's the nature of it. Hey, um, those of you who are followers of DPW, something we tried to get done for a long time got done today. Yes. The shareholder vote passed by just a bit outside, <laughs> a razor's outside. Um, it passed by... Uh, Fifty point three three percent. Now, now the votes were higher than that. I, I should be clear. The quorum, the people that actually voted, fifty point three three percent. That means forty nine point something percent didn't vote. Right. Uh, Robin Hood system sucks because they don't vote for their share. They don't vote for their owners. They make them required to them. They don't put together a quorum and vote all of them either. So normally broker dealers will look at everyone's votes and they'll they'll vote them in a pro rata basis. So if if sixty percent were yes and forty percent were no, they'd vote sixty forty for everyone. Yep. But now Robinhood doesn't even do it. To getting if you notice a lot of smaller companies that are diverse ownership are having trouble getting votes passed, it's because people don't vote. And there's so much trading going on, the shareholder base changes over and over and over again. I know. Uh, so I'm ranting a little bit about this because I'm not happy 
But I am happy we passed. We got a quorum. All the measures passed, like 70 or above, 80, 90. But it was a struggle. And it was important because this is an important thing to know and that with the passing of this vote, we are now fully in compliance with the rules of the New York Stock Exchange American because we got an annual meeting off. Yep. Uh, Todd, you want to cover anything about the market in particular? I want to get to J.B. Mullen. This okay. guy has been a supporter. I want to hear from him. I think this will put me in a better mood. I love to talk to people that uh, have opinions and are honest. And he's been a... Hey, listen, you don't have to always be a supporter. In fact, I'm happy to put non-supporters on the on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but J.B. Mullen has been out there and uh, he's been willing to be with us. So let's, uh, let's just get right to him. J.B., thanks for waiting. Yeah, what's good, guys? So, uh, where are you are you in South Carolina? Yeah, well, I'm in Queen City, close uh, Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, North Carolina. Very I close. To, yeah, I, I know there's a north and a south. I know my aunt lives in Myrtle Beach. Nice area. Uh, that's south, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then Andrea's from where? Uh, north. She's from Raleigh. She's from Raleigh. Not okay. too far from Ballin. Two and a half hours down the old. Uh, yep. What is okay. that? Forty down forty. Okay. Okay, got yeah, it. Myrtle Plate, oh. uh, Myrtle Beach is a fun town. Uh, sure. If you if you don't mind, can you tell us what you do for a living besides trading? Yeah, so I work in inside software sales. So basically, oh. uh, sell software to manufacturers that are in all different types of industries. But I focus on the medical device and diagnostics industry. Nice. I I, I apologize one more time. He, he said software sales, but medical devices. Yeah, medical device. What else? So basically, I, I take software to medical device manufacturers. Oh, okay. So anything that can be used in the development, yep. uh, the idea, then how it's manufactured. So, so you're in software sales. Is that is the model? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what brand will I be drinking today? Someone wrote. <laughs> 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 um, it, it, is the software like uh, when they call? Is it hard, is it effectively um, firmware that's inside a device? No, no. So the software that we make or that we sell, I mean, it can be used in Indian, uh, any industry. Uh, it's things like simulation <laughs> technology, manufacturing execution systems, um, you know, big, big data. Basically, it's anything that goes into the, the, the idea of the product wow, and Bitcoin's then ripping. how that product gets made. So any of that type of software that goes into those areas of companies. Very, very cool. Uh, hey, are you invested in Bitcoin or Ethereum? No, I'm not. I'm Bit- not. But what? I'm big on a- in AKD, though. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Bitcoin with a massive flag on the five-minute. Just went to 46, 47675 A big, big move just now. Um, yeah, we know you're a part of the... Well, I don't know if you're part of the Naked Army, but you, uh, you like the stock, right? I do like the stock, man. Yeah. I, I do consider myself a part of the Naked Army. Gotcha. I think anybody that's holding naked long term is part of the naked army. For uh, sure. Tell me a little yeah. bit. Now, I might get you in trouble here. I, I hope I don't. Um, do, have you set a target price where you would consider maybe taking a little bit of profit on, on the naked stock? Or, or have you not thought that far ahead? Yeah, you know, I have, just to be honest. You know, I, I think it's kind of like Rip and Dip Traders has said in his videos, talking about, uh, you know, taking a little bit off the top. Suck. When there's a, uh, you know, when there's a good part to the squeeze, but I'm not going to sell until it, unless it's falling. Like it's, yeah, I, I would, I would, I, I'd like to go, uh, I'd like to go backwards for a second. So you look like a young guy. You're definitely not yeah. 51 like I am. <laughs> um, good for you, by the way, because when you turn fifth, when you turn 40, you lose your eye, start losing your eyesight. When you turn 50, Stuff on your body starts not doing the same thing it used to do. And when you turn over 50, like 51, 52, you start noticing like you got like a, a mole here. And it's just you get old really quickly. You're aging. You're rusting like a, a, an old ship here. Uh, so how did you get into trading? How did you start trading? Maybe give us a little bit of your history. So honestly, for me. I started hearing about the AMC, GME, you know, these squeezes that were going on. Um, and, you know, I started to look into it. And then I came across NAKD, came across, you know, watched some YouTube videos, got in touch with you guys. Um, 
and just started doing some due diligence and, and decided to, to take some risks that I felt were calculated. Um, but to be honest, when I was first thinking, yeah, I should start investing more, learning about it, I didn't really realize, and it's something that I guess risk on while you all were out uh, you know, the past three weeks, um, you know, you released a video about the, the naked army and it, not just the stock itself, but how people were coming together and sharing information um, that was all there for anybody to be able to come up. doesn't matter if, if you, you know, for me, I don't consider myself a, I'm not an investment advisor at all. Um, but, I, you know, seeing the conviction and the people in the Naked Telegram, the conviction they have for the stock, the hard work they put into it. Um, yeah, that's where really where I was like, this is, you know, this is fun. I'm learning a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm very bullish on NAKD. But as far as other stocks, too, I mean, it's this whole experience for me has, has, got, has got me, uh, you know, really excited to learn and continue investing. What's the best thing about Switzerland? What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag's a big plus. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're really working this thing. I like it a lot. You're really working it. I, I do. Thank you. The point of this, why did we digress to poker, is we look at assess our hand and the decision outcome and the likelihood that we'd win. Right. And the only reason I like naked right now is the likelihood of I'm going to win is high better, rather than lose because the price is good. The downside is predictable, right? Because the market could get ugly. Right. But the upside is he's going to do a deal. Yes. He's not going to sit with $300 million. He can't pay himself enough money to just sit there. Even if he paid himself a million a year, that'd be 30 years. I mean, that'd be 300 years, yeah. right? It, 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 and he doesn't have enough burn rate in operational capital. To, he has to make an acquisition. And he has a year for compliance. Right. So I, the- I think the risk rewards here, that's why I like Naked. That's why I like JB, because JB's uh, just telling it like he, he thinks it is. Hey, it, it freaks me out because he has that Wall Street bets little thing on his on his Twitter or something. Oh, yeah. So for oh, the yeah, longest the time, guy. I thought I was being trolled. I didn't know who he was. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. I wasn't responding to him because I'm thinking, oh, shit, this is a Wall Street bets guy. I'm going to get my ass kicked. Because, you know, some of them troll me a little bit on the AMC short. The, just, yeah. Yeah. Even though I'm only short 1,800 shares. Although I did cover those puts today. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's just something, ah, it's a fun it's something, something to do. It's something to do. That's all. Hey, JB, we appreciate your time. We'll see you at the conference. Everybody out there, uh, Jason, what do you want to do to wrap up the show? We're going to call it early this today. Yeah, let's call it early. Keep an eye on crypto over the weekend. Uh, Bitcoin will probably test 50000 I would. That's my guess. Hey, uh, look for uh, DPW earnings uh, Monday. Oh, yeah. And Mo- a conference call at 2.30 uh, on Monday. We're going to cover a lot about what's going on with DPW. Thank you for being a DPW shareholder. If you are, if you're not and you're a hater, you can be there too. All haters invited, all lovers invited. Skyla, enjoy your weekend in California. Yep. My man, Nick and Brett, thank you so much. Josh, thanks for being in town. Willie, I hope you're safe and enjoying your dad. We'll see everybody on Monday. I'll be in a better mood. I'm in a good mood now because we talked to J.B. Ballin. I'm in a great mood because my friend Jason and I are going to see the Eagles tomorrow night. Well, the fake Eagles, the faux Eagles. But sometimes the cover bands are even as good as the real band. True. Really? Really? Yeah, yeah. See you Monday.